All right, folks, so if you are training your dog at home yourself, you may be watching this because you're getting ready for a gunfire introduction. We have a bunch of videos put together into one place, which is our course, okay? We have a versatile dog training course and we have a retriever flusher course. All of them show step-by-step -step as well as have checklists to help you follow out along the way and all of our videos sorted in order. Yes, this is a guide to the YouTube videos absolutely fantastic way to keep you on track through development and then we have a handful of other videos that aren't really allowed on youtube available in the courses check them out standingstonesupply.com slash courses Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone, and today this video is all about how to be a gunner from the gunner's perspective in bird and gun introductions, or at least more importantly, gunfire introductions for bird dogs. We have uh, Jessica over here, she's training through her string of dogs today, and we're gonna see a variety of different things. Dogs that are having their first introductions to dogs that are in session two to three, making sure that we have a really good understanding. We're gonna have different distances, as well as you're gonna see some, um, some things happening from a timing standpoint. It's important to know um, proper communication with the person actually handling the dog. And then the pro tip or the most important thing is timing is everything in this process. So you need to make sure that you know what the signal is and that you are on time with your shot when it's being called for. And then if, most importantly here, if you feel like, oh, I'm late or I missed it or something to that effect, you don't fire at all. A missed rep is way better than a mistimed or poorly timed rep. Now we're gonna go ahead and move through this. I'll explain as we go along kind of what we're seeing as well as what the reps themselves should be, how long they should last. Um, we'll kind of talk through that with each individual dog. But this is, again, gunfire introduction from the gunner's perspective. This um, is where we typically start. It's a 209 primer pistol. The 209 primers are better than 22 caliber anything. A lot of people go with a 22 rifle or a 22 pistol. And the thing about any rifle type of sound is it's a lot sharper. So she's starting with a little toss, having fun with the dog. Um, but the rifle sounds are sharper. This pop from a 209, it's going to more mimic a similar sound of what your shotgun does. And we utilize them as a really good starting place. I would say in the vicinity here, we're at the approximately 100 yard category-ish, give or take a little bit. Okay, so dog's super pumped about that. I'm waiting for my signal. I didn't see one, so I don't fire. seems pretty pretty self-explanatory but it's uh it's not always and i think people get a little nervous or a little unsure of what to do and the most important thing you can do here is pay attention and be ready yes ma'am wow good so one pop here, dog continued focusing on the retrieve, picked it up, actually did a little tumble with enthusiasm, picked it up and is headed back. The thing that we're watching for in the gunfire introductions, and this isn't as much something that you can always even see as the gunner, but we're trying to make sure that the dog pays zero attention to the gunshot itself. Now I'm gonna move a little closer, which is typically how we would work this trying to avoid the giant pile of stickers. Good, very good. So in that situation, and this is gonna be a pretty typical session. Um, one to two shots, maybe a third. Think about everything in small steps. It's not one day. We're gonna go out and we're gonna shoot a whole bunch of times and then now our dog is conditioned to gunfire. We want to keep small pieces with the dog focused on the task. Uh, in this case, retrieving uh, something that most of these dogs really enjoy. 
I'm gonna reload my blank pistol that keeps getting hooked up in this pocket. If only they made a holster for these things. Alrighty, moving into the next dog. And as we get ready for this, I wanna talk about a couple things. This area that we are in, wide open country. This is very important. A lot of people try and do this in their side yard or next to their building or in their backyard, something like that. If you live out in the country even, and you go to one of your training grounds, it always gets done as a yard drill close to buildings. And buildings cause weird reverberations of sound or echoes of the sound, and it can actually cause issues sometimes. So as wide open as is possible is best for gunfire introductions. All right, this little dog is pumped. I would assume that she's going to call for a shot, but she'll ask if I'm ready. Nope, she's not ready for it yet. There's a flappy bird and a happy dog. So here, building really good engagement, uh, making sure that we have a dog that's super focused on what is there and if a regular bumper isn't exciting enough um, a lot of times we end up utilizing a live pigeon that flaps around and is exciting for dogs and as long as they have a really good introduction and are comfortable with the birds themselves can be a very powerful tool in pulling focus these guys but i mean they're bird dogs so it can be very beneficial, but it's all about reading. We wanna make sure a dog is very focused, very confident in what they're doing. Um, and if it's not the right time to shoot for them, it's better to make that call than to say, ah, let's see, and then create gun sensitivity issues. It's a lot harder to fix than it is to prepare properly or develop and train properly, so. We are up for our next dog. If you remember all right, this is a dog that um, has had a few introductions and we're on the edge as far as where, uh, if we're ready for gunfire to be introduced to this or not. Still trying to build drive and desire and uh, it's taken a little bit of time. But it's also better to be prepared. So I'm standing here waiting just in case we see good things today. If we don't see good things, then you go ahead and move on to the next one. She looks like she's doing a pretty dang good job. Pretty excited about this. Picked it up, chased it down, bringing it back, enthusiastic. These are all good things. Good, absolutely fantastic. I can see dog stayed 100% focused on the bird the entire time. Um, heard gunfire in the kind of the peak of that excitement. That's the zone we're shooting for. We want them zoned in, focused on this task, not anything else. And then ultimately, gunfire will become associated with, and they'll hear gunfire and think birds. But in the beginning stages, we want focus on the bird first, have fun with that. Now, you may be wondering, why do I have a blank pistol and a shotgun? Shotgun is for um, the being prepared category. We have a few dogs because we're not just training one today, we have a few dogs that are in different zones that may be ready for this, depending on how they do. Um, that'll be up for Jessica to call, but just having all of the pieces to be prepared to keep the process moving smooth. So a pretty common question, or a lot of times people come to the resource of proper gunfire introduction or look into this because they're having issues. There's some kind of older thought processes about banging pots and pans together, or taking their dog to the gun range. These are things that we don't really recommend because we don't have control over them, as well as the pots and pans really have no actual context. Okay, there it is. So when we bang pots and pans together, though it might be at feeding time or something like that, there's really no context for, for why, it's just noise. It's just why 
Dogs that can be hunted over can also be afraid of fireworks. Loud, br loud noises, bright lights, it's not associated with anything else, so it's kind of out of context. Now, in this situation, um, you may have sensitivity issues or you may have a full-on gun-shy dog. People always ask, you know, is this fixable? There's a thought process that it's not fixable. I believe that every gun-sensitive or gun-shy dog can be fixed with enough time, proper reps, but the key is gunfire doesn't fix gun sensitivity or gun shy issues. We have to build excitement around something and then we just overlay gunfire with that. Let's get ready for this next one. Again, an entry level toss, build excitement, start the session off. You can see often a, a very common, I don't know how well you guys can see this in there, but a very common thing if you want a dog to pick something up and bring it back to you, just turning and moving away from them and encouraging them to come with you as a pack leader or somebody that they're following. Um, it's one of those things that a lot of times the dog doesn't want to leave this cool reward bumper or bird and they want to come with you. So it forces their hand to pick this up and come on, hurry up, we're leaving. So it's a really good way to encourage that um, in the beginning. Again, not pressure related, no collar with that, just encouragement, hey, come on and they start to see you moving away, so they try and come with you. All right, I am ready in case I get a signal. All right, in that situation, she didn't see the toss. She was kind of focused and then squirreled or something to that effect. So it's definitely not a situation. Um, you can see Jessica's headed out there to help her, encourage. Being a good pack leader is very important. She runs with her. This should be fun and exciting. We can't just meander out there. Be excited about the process and encourage your dog to go with you. Um, they figure it out a lot faster. It's pretty easy for them to understand, wow, this is fun and exciting if we're all doing it together. All righty, folks. So those are some of the big tips uh, and important things to think about while you are the gunner in your dog's gunfire introduction session, sessions. Excuse me. While you are the gunner in your gunfire introduction sessions, that is a tongue twister. We um, have a few dogs left that we're gonna go ahead and work through, but as always, if you have questions, throw them in the comments below. Reach out to us at patreon.com slash standingstonekennels where we're set up to answer questions on the daily. I'm the guy with the pink gun. I'm gonna continue helping Jess out. We'll see you in the next one.